around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, the story of a man who moved with it, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. I sure do thank you for that breakfast, Mr. Dillon. Forget it, Chester. My steak, eggs, potatoes, and a glass of beer. Why, that could last a man clean to noon dinner. <laughs> I guess it could. Mr. Dillon, you figure Amy will have your horse shod by the time we get there? Oh, he should. You think he's done him any good? He's a good blacksmith, Chester. If he trimmed up his feet right before he reset those shoes, he ought to be fine. Funny the way he took throwing his foreleg. Yeah. Now, it looks like there's somebody else waiting. Yeah. Gil Tolman, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I think it is. I'm telling you something else, Dutchman. You can whistle for your money. You won't get it from me. All right. I don't make you pay. The morning after I got him home, he was so lame he couldn't walk. I'd have break your head. Please, if it was my fault, something I did wrong, don't pay me anything. That seems fair enough, Tolman. Oh. Well, Marshal, this fool Dutchman messed up my pony, and then he wants to get paid on top of it. Well, maybe it's a stone bruise. It ain't no stone bruise, Marshal. It's pinched feet, that's what. Is uh, that the horse you're talking about? Why, no, no, he's back at the place. This is another one. How about my horse, Amo? You finished with him? All finished. Now he walks good. Ah, fine. Well, how much are you? Uh, Two dollars, all right, Marshal? Sure. Here you are. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Chester, hmm? you get up behind. I'll ride you back to the office. All Come right, on. Sir. There we go. Uh, Marshal. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Tolman uh, told lie. Oh? Yeah, the horse he ride just now is the one I shoe two days ago. You can see he's not lame. He didn't seem to be. There's sure nothing wrong the way he traveled. Amo, why is Tolman Hura on you, huh? Do you know? Maybe because I'm German. Maybe something else. Who knows? Well, I'll ask him to settle his bill with you if you like. No. No, Marshal. <laughs> well, you won't get rich if you aren't paid, Amo. Uh, money is good, yeah, but better to have no enemies. <laughs> All right, Amo. Well, Chester, hang on. Get up. This is mercy on us. Mr. Dillon? What, Chester? Did you know that Lily Lankry's going to be here in a couple of weeks? Oh, how did you know? Mr. Hipple over at the Opera House told me, oh. and in case I don't get to see her, he's going to let me have one of them big picture posters. He is? Yes, sir, the Jersey Lily. My, I sure would like to be tall hog at that trough. <laughs> oh, hello, Martin Chester. Hello, Doc. Hello, Doc. Hey, did you know Lily Lankry's going to be here, Doc? Oh, of course, Chester. I already paid Hipple for a chair. Oh, <laughs> Uh, is this all you two have got to do, just sit around and talk? Well, things are quiet, Doc. We can't always have a few shot-up cowboys just to keep you busy. Besides, we're waiting for the evening stage. Wish I had the loan of a door. Maybe I'd get to see the lily, too. Uh, Chester, here. You oh, no, Here's the dollar. dollar. Now, will you be quiet? Well, sir, I sure do thank you, Mr. <laughs> Dillon. Marshal Dillon? Oh, Amo, come in, come in. 
I just come by to see how your horse is. Oh, fine, Emil, fine. I think that sure and fixed him up. Good. Hey, you're all dressed up, Emil. You got your Sunday clothes on. <laughs> yeah. I'm meeting stage five o'clock. Oh, is that so? Yeah. Got uh, you wife coming. Huh? Oh. <laughs> uh, you got one? It's right. Well, I didn't know you were married, Emil. Oh, not yet married. I will get married after she arrives. Well, forevermore. Who is it, Emil? Well, uh, I am doing good now. I want to have wife and children. But girls here in Dodge don't want husband. They like better the Texas Trail and Longhorn. Well, there's a lot of excitement and money to be had working around the saloon. Eh? That's true. So I answer advertisement in St. Louis paper. You did what? Advertisement. Says the young German woman wants husband. So I write to the paper and say, come to Dodge City, be wife of Emil Volheta. And she's coming in on this evening's stage. Yeah, that's right. Oh, well, oh, it's, oh that's just fine, Emil. You got a place for her to stay? Yeah, I talked to Mr. Green at the Dodge house. Now. She'll stay there until I get a place ready behind my smithy. It's here. The stage just pulled up the other side of the plant. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> well, good luck, Emil. Oh. oh Marshal, Marshal, you and Doc and Chester come too. I want you to meet Gretchen. <laughs> we'll be proud, Emil. Yeah. <laughs> you? Funny thing, I, I'm not afraid of anything. But now... My, my stomach is sick. Yeah, there's only one woman getting off the stage. That must be her. Yeah? Mm, she's a pretty little thing, ain't she? Well, go on, Abel. She's standing there waiting. Oh, we'll stay here. Go on. Well, uh, 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 well go on, man. Go on, go on. There's ooh. plenty of time to be nervous later. Oh, well, well... <laughs> Listen to that. Makes you wonder how they can understand each other, don't it? Talking that way. Oh, Chester, for heaven's sake. Oh, look, he's bringing her over here. Speaking the English, Fräulein Kitchen? Yeah, naturally. Ah, good, good. Uh, Marshal Dillon, gentlemen, <laughs> Miss Gretchen Schiller. How do you do, gentlemen? <laughs> How do? Ah. How do you do, ma'am? Welcome to Dodge, Miss Schiller. Oh, thank you, Marshal. I hope you'll be happy here. Uh, you certainly got a fine man. I know much about him already. We have written. Now, Marshal, I will take Gretchen to the hotel. Uh, uh, come and see. Again, it's Gretchen. Well, here. Ah, there. She seems a little scared, doesn't she, Matt? Now, Doc, she took a chance on coming out here. Yeah, well, so did Emil. Getting married to a mail order bride like buying a pig and a poke. You can't be sure till it's too late. Oh, for the oh, Come on, Matt. This is an excuse for some sort of a celebration. I'll buy you a glass of rye. <laughs> hey, you too, Chester. All right, Doc, since you're buying. You know, I was just thinking. She's so little and Emil's so big, I hope he don't take it into his mind to beat her none. Now, Emil's about the gentlest man I've ever known, Chester. And besides, Chester, men don't always beat their wives. My pa did. <laughs> well, well, well. Sam, set out some glasses and a bottle of rye whiskey. And then when the stage comes in a few minutes ago, I see where he gets himself a gal bought out of a newspaper. And Gil Tolman One again, Mr. Dillon. One of them foreigners is yeah. all we need around here. Now there's two. We ought to tar and feather the both of them and send them on their way. All right, all right. Doc, you and Chester wait here. Tar and feathers are too good for foreigners that are trying to take over the town. Yes, sir. All right. Tolman, how drunk are you? I ain't at all. Well, you talk like a man that's been drinking. Ain't a man allowed to say what he thinks around Dodge no more, Marshal? Not when he's thinking that way, Tolman. 
This is between Wall Hader and me. It has nothing to do with the law. It's got a lot to do with me, Toman. Now you drink up and get out. And you take Spooner and Willie here with you. Now just a minute. Now you listen to me. All of you. Wall Hader's trying to mind his own business. And if there's any trouble, I'll know who started it. And he'll go to jail. You saying you're going to lock me up? Tolman, if Emil Wolhater ever gets mad enough, he'll kill you with his bare hands. Now leave him and his girl alone. <laughs> girl. Why, she's probably nothing but a little... Oh. All right, Tolman. You and Spooner carry Willie out of here. Okay, Marshal. We'll go. Just remember, I got a score to settle with that blacksmith. We will return for the second act of Gunsmoke in just a moment. But first... Later tonight, CBS Radio's Gangbusters again recreates a dramatic, spine-tingling, factual history of the pursuit and apprehension of some of the world's most dangerous criminals. Tonight's program reveals the story of a strange stick-up gang which comes to no good end in the case of the close-knit family. It's another story based on actual police files telling the truth about criminals and crime. Don't miss the case of the close-knit family on Gangbusters over most of these same stations later tonight. Now the second act of Gunsmoke. By the end of the next week, Emil Wolhater had finished fixing up the little room out behind his smithy. And the week after that, he married Gretchen Schiller. On their wedding night, they made quite a picture standing there by the fire out behind the smithy. The great giant of a man and his tiny little bride, smiling and happy. Doc had come along, too, and he was busy with his fiddle. People were laughing and eating and drinking. Somebody had brought along a barrel of beer, and there were hard-boiled eggs and pickled pig's feet, roast chicken, and smoked beef. Some of the women had brought sugar cakes and dried apple pie, and some of the men, whiskey. It was good fun, until Tolman and his sidekicks arrived. Well, I didn't think he'd show up here, Mr. Dillon. No, neither did I. Where else the dancing? Mm, he's kind of drunk. Yeah, so are Willie and Spooner. Willie, go find yourself a gal. You too, Spooner. Me, I got one waiting. I'm going to dance with this little old gal. How about it, Mrs. Woolhater? Amen? Come on, gal, dance. He don't care. Amen? We are all friends here. But I... Nobody's dancing right now, Tolman. Why don't you forget it, huh? Well, if it ain't the marshal. You are welcome here, Mr. Tolman. There's food on the table and drink. I don't want nothing to drink. I want to dance. Ah, start that fiddle playing. Come on, you, we're gonna dance. Maybe you would drink too much to dance. Don't you lay a hand on me. Why don't you just go home, Tolman, and sleep it off? Me and Gretchen's gonna dance, that's why. Come on. I'm sorry to do this, Mr. Tolman. Put me down. But now we put you in the water trough. Put me down. Cool you off. You stupid ox. Put me down. All right. There you go. <laughs> That'll quiet him some, Abel. <laughs> Better than hurting him, I think. You filthy Dutchman. I'll pay you back for that. Come on, Willie. Spooner, let's go. Everybody, have fun. No troubles on wedding night of Gretchen and Abel. <laughs> And there was.
wasn't any more trouble that night or in the week that followed. I kept my eyes open, but there was no sign of Tallman or his two wranglers, and Dodge was pretty peaceful. Then late one night, trouble did come, but not the way I'd expected it. I'd fallen asleep on a cot in the office. Mr. Dillon? Uh, Mr. Dillon. What? what? Wake up, Mr. What? Dillon. What? What's the matter? What's the matter, There's a fire. What? what? It's a blacksmith shop. I, I come as quick as I could. Well, well is it bad? Yes, sir. A bunch of the men are out there now. Where's Amo? I don't know. Nobody's seen him. How about Gretchen? Miss Kitty, it's her. She's pretty upset. Oh. By the time we got bucket lines going, the place is just about burned to the ground. Oh. Well, how did it start? Do you know? No, sir, I don't. But a shack like that flares up pretty quick. They didn't have time to get anything out, beds or tables or the like. Well, there doesn't seem to be much left but a pile of coals. Look at the rain. Oh, it, there's Miss Kitty. Over there. And Gretchen. Yeah. Oh, Matt. Mrs. Walhater. Kitty. Oh, Marshal. He's gone. All gone. And Amy works so hard. Now, it's going to be all right, Miss Walhater. Kitty, yeah. uh, why don't you take her on over to your place? Huh? Oh, that's a good idea. Come on, honey. Oh, no, no, no. I, I can't. Amber will be back. He'll worry. Well, the marshal can tell him where you are. Where is your husband, Gretchen? He was called away. Oh? When? A few hours ago. A man came for him. Said he was needed. Well, who was it? He was one of the men who came our wedding night. Oh, she means the night of the chivalry, Matt. Yeah. That must have been Willie or Spooner. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Gretchen! I Gretchen Liebchen. Liebchen, bist du beletzt? Oh, Liebchen. Oh, the God. It was so bon Amo, uh, it, it burned too fast. Uh, the men uh, couldn't get water to it. Yeah, I know, Marshal. I've heard, but Gretchen is safe. Yeah. That is important. I'm going to take her with me, Mr. Wollhader. You're very kind, Miss Kitty. Right now, she needs a woman. Yeah. Come on, Gretchen. Let's yeah. go. Yeah. All right. Marshal, I think somebody set that fire. Well, why do you think so, Amo? Somebody wanted me away from my place. So he told me I was needed down the trail towards Willow Bend. But there was no team of horses with thrown shoes. So maybe you just missed him in the dark. Well, didn't the man who came for you wait to lead you back? No, he rode on. By the time I dressed, he was gone. Did you know him, Amos? Sure. It was the man Spooner. He works with Tolman. Now, he works for Tolman. Yeah, and Tolman's just mean enough to do it. He is... Look, Emil, if you'll say that Tolman did it, I'll have him in jail by morning. No, no, Marshal. No, this I settle myself. I won't have any killing, Emil. Ah, no, no, there will be no killing, Marshal, but for the first time, I am getting very angry. Not so much for me, but for little Gretchen. Oh, what are you going to do? I will wait. And when I see Tolman, I will teach him lessons. You want more coffee, Mr. Dillon? Uh, no, 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 thanks, Chester. Did you know Emma Woolhater's been just standing across the plaza there all morning? He's waiting, Chester. Waiting? Yeah, it's Saturday, and Tolman always comes to town Saturday for his week's supplies. He probably figures if he didn't come in this morning, people would suspect he was afraid to. Yep. My golly, Amos still there. Just standing. You think Tolman knows Amos after him? I don't know, Chester. Mm. Mr. Dillon? Yeah? He's coming. Tolman's coming. And he's got Willie Sachs and Spooner with him. Come on, Chester, let's step out onto the porch, huh? I think we need a little air. Yes, sir. Hey, look. Look at the three of them. Walking right down the middle of the plaza. Yeah. Oh, uh, Tolman, come over here a minute, huh? Why, sure, Marshal. What 
want. Coleman? That crazy Dutch. All right, Tolman, you and your men drop your guns. Well, now, wait a minute, Mark. Drop them, I said. That's better. Now, gentlemen, I think the blacksmith wants to talk with you. What? Mr. Tolman. I don't mind when you don't pay me for work. I don't mind when you are a little drunk. But when you do something to upset my wife, I mind very much. What are you talking about? I... I'm going to fight you, Torman, and hurt you. You lay a hand on me and Spooner and Willie here will tear you to pieces. I don't want to fight other men. But if they try to stop me, it's too bad. You are crazy. No. Just very mad. I'll see that they come at you only one at a time. Please, Marshal, you stay out of it, out. If they want to come at me at the same time, let them. Boys, get the (laughs) Dutchman. Some of you men there, will you help Doc carry these three men up for his That's place? That's right, young fella, get the feet there. Get, 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 careful now, careful. Watch their heads against the stairs. Get that man's face out of the dust. My gracious alive, I never seen nothing like it. Yeah. Well, Emil, mm-hmm. yeah. you, uh, you want Doc to have a look at you? <laughs> no. No, no worse than shooing Missouri Mule. No, no, Marshal. I go to Gretchen. It is time we start building new home. Gunsmoke, transcribed under the direction of Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Tonight's story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Mr. MacDonald, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Featured in the cast were John Daner, Gene Bates, Vic Perrin, and Luke Krugman. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. George Walsh speaking. Join us again next week as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal fights to bring law and order out of the wild violence of the West in Gunsmoke. When rustlers are on the loose, Gene Autry isn't long getting on their trail tomorrow night on most of these same CBS stations. Don't miss Gene's adventure titled Maisie's Boys, and a hard lot you'll find them, too. It's the Gene Autry Show with songs by the Melody Ranchers and Adventure 2 tomorrow night at the Star's Address. Stay tuned now for Gangbusters, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network.